A man collapses near you. You witness a car crash. Your friend experiences chest pain. What do you do in each of these situations? Most of us would call 911 and we would be relieved if an ambulance got to us quickly. Response time is also what our local governments and the media like to discuss. But what about everything after the ambulance gets there? Shouldn't we worry about that too? It turns out we've been thinking about that part much less. And as a result, our current ambulance system is based on little scientific evidence. In the United States, we have two types of ambulances. One type provides basic life support, and the other provides advanced life support. Suppose we have parallel worlds, one in which a cardiac arrest patient gets basic life support, the other in which she gets advanced life support. When the basic life support ambulance gets to the scene, it can provide chest compressions, use an automated defibrillator, and apply a bag valve mass for airway support. Because these are relatively simple measures, the basic ambulance can get to the hospital quickly. When the advanced ambulance gets to the scene, it can provide chest compressions too, but it would use a semi-automated defibrillator, endotracheal intubation for airway support, and it can set up an intravenous line for providing drugs and fluids. Because these interventions are relatively complex, the advanced ambulance takes longer to get to the hospital. In a carefully monitored study for cardiac arrest, advanced ambulances took about 28 minutes between the scene and the hospital. The basic ambulances took only 14 minutes. So the question is, which is better, getting only basic care but getting to the hospital quickly, or getting advanced care but getting to the hospital later? This question has been the focus of my research for the past few years. I started my work by putting together a large amount of data on Medicare patients. This included information on the patient's transports, their medical histories, and their demographics. I also had information on where patients lived and the hospitals they could attend. In all, I had access to 7.9 million randomly sampled ambulance transports that took place between 2006 and 2011. Once I had my data, I wanted to compare the outcomes of patients that received basic life support with the ones that received advanced life support. In one of my analyses, I used variation in the use of advanced life support across counties in the United States. The basic idea was this. Suppose I have two counties, County X and County Y. You can see that County Y has more advanced ambulances than County X. County Y also has more people dead after their ambulance transport than County X. If we compare the differences between counties X and Y in their use of advanced life support and outcomes, we can answer questions such as, how does ambulance type affect survival? I conducted a more complex version of this analysis using an econometrics approach called instrumental variables analysis. I also conducted a second study in which I used a statistics approach called propensity score weighting. Here, I compared similar groups of basic and advanced life support patients within counties. What I found suggests our ambulance system is in serious trouble. For example, if we look at major trauma cases with the most critical injuries, then out of 100 patients that get advanced life support, 63 would live to at least 90 days, but the other 37 would die before 90 days. However, if all of these patients instead got basic life support, then I estimate an additional 15 people would live to at least 90 days. That's based on my propensity score weighting analysis. Patients who got basic life support also did better after cardiac arrest, stroke, and heart attacks. So the summary is that basic life support has better outcomes than advanced life support. This is a big problem. 
because currently if we call 911, most of the time we get the advanced ambulance. So how is it that advanced is worse than basic? Well, it seems the time to hospital matters. There are interventions such as endotracheal intubation, which may have serious delivery quality problems. And there are other interventions such as aggressive fluid resuscitation in trauma patients that perhaps should wait until the patient's at the hospital. So advanced isn't really advanced when it comes to outcomes. So how did all these advanced ambulances even get out there? I'm still trying to understand the incentive structures and the history of our ambulance system. But what I do know is these decisions were not based on scientific evidence. In fact, what we know works is part of basic life support. So we have a lot of work ahead of us to fix our ambulance system. By using data and statistics, we carefully using data and statistics, <laughs> We can study causality in real-world settings that are otherwise difficult to replicate in experiments. Powered with data, our generation can challenge the political and institutional inertia that supports practices in the absence of scientific evidence. Thank you.